Hey everyone, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus in Denver, Colorado. Today we're going to be working on a pair of Luke KC boots that are ostrich skin. We're going to be re-soling the bottoms with a JR sole, which is a premium grade leather. It's oak bark tanned, so it's got a denser pore structure in it and a fiber structure, so it makes it a lot more durable. And the other thing is it also doesn't take on any water or salt um, that will potentially degrade soles, usually on a, on a basic type of sole that you would see. But the JR sole won't do that. But uh, anyways, today we're going to be, at, at least today, we're going to be taking it apart um, because it's the end of the day here for us today. And I'm kind of starting this at a bad time. I had a really, uh, really crazy packed day. So we'll go ahead and get started. Sorry about that, I had to answer a few questions for someone here, but I've already popped off the little heel piece here, and I'm just pulling out some of these threaded nails. Now they're short, so I could usually hammer them down, but also at the same time, they actually get in the way sometimes when we decide to start running our own nails in. So if possible, I try to pull them out. But these uh, nails are usually there just to hold down the little rubber cap that's on there. Okay, so I've got that taken care of. Now we're gonna use a little bit of thinner, which I gotta refill it, so I'll be right back then. All right, now I think uh, in order to possibly save some time, what I'll actually do is, so I'm not blabbering too much, I'll probably just fast forward me taking everything apart and uh, just do what I need to, at least for the taking, part, and taking it all apart side of things. And I'll stop every now and then, maybe explain a few things. So let's go ahead and keep going. All right, so I've got the heel bases off, and I should probably mark them before I get rid of them. Because of how badly these heel bases are worn out, I could definitely tell which one's left, which one's right. We're actually not not planning on replacing them. Yeah, they're still in good enough shape all the way down here, and we always try to keep the original ones as much as possible, just because they are going to fit this particular boot. So we're going to be trying to save these um, by building up this heel base after we get it back on with scraps of leather and leveling it all out. So we're going to go ahead and save these. Now, because of the way it's worn out, I know that this one right here is for the left foot because usually it's the outside edge of the heel that wears out anyways. So I'm just going to grab my marker, make sure I write the ticket number. Okay, so we got that all taken care of. Now we're done with the heel base, so we're just gonna set them aside. And now we're gonna go ahead and uh, cut through the stitches around the edges and start separating the sole from the welt. Now usually we end up using our thinner um, to s get the glue to deactivate on here, but unfortunately the big challenge and problem with um, the ostrich, especially in a lighter color like this, it stains very, very easily. I mean, you can see some of the staining from wear and everything, but if we use a thinner or anything to help deactivate glues, if just a drop gets on the edge anywhere, it's going to really 
you know, really make it an eyesore in other words. And there's just no way of covering it or removing it unless we're gonna use spray dyes. And uh, considering how soft this leather is, you really don't wanna use any form of spray dyes or acrylic paints or anything like that that's designed to settle over top. It, it just looks horrendous. So we're definitely not gonna be doing that. So I'm gonna be using my little knife here like that. And by the way, just for anyone who's curious, this is what's called a heel pry. That's what I was using to pry up the heel all around. Um, it's kind of like a multi-tool for us cobblers. It's a curved piece like that that looks like a really wide screwdriver that's not very sharp at all, but it helps us get into certain areas and pry it up. And that's why it's called a heel pry. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get started on cutting everything. All right, so we got the sole off now, and um, you'd probably see me using the knife from about this area here all the way around back to right there. That's where the heel base starts, and also what's called the heel ren. Um, this is this little plastic piece that does not get stitched through. I ended up using my heel pry to pull it off of there. In this area, the sole is just glued on and then nailed in. Um, and then afterwards the heel base goes on and that gets nailed in so that that uh, Area there doesn't need any kind of stitch work At this point. I'm just removing the inner heel pad there and then Try to see if I can get some of these nails out Okay. Now I pulled out some of the nails that were holding down the sole on the heel area to the Ren, and now at this point I have to try to, if I can get in there nicely, I have to try to remove these gripper nails here. They were what were holding down the uh, heel base itself mainly. But it takes a bit of effort. Most cobblers actually leave them in. I at least attempt to try to remove however many I can. Sometimes they're so stubborn they just won't come out, but there's one anyways. I'll go ahead and uh, take out the rest of them and then do this other boot as well. I'll do that all off camera so I'm not wasting you guys time too much. And at this point uh, for today I'm actually done. Um, I'm going to also trace the soles out. So I'm going to line them up so that I could get this JR beautiful logo centered as much as possible. I'll trace that out and then toss these. And then tomorrow when I'm back I'll continue on with these boots with doing what I need to do next. So we'll see you tomorrow then. All right, so we're back here again. Now I sanded everything out on here on the bottom to remove the glue. We pulled out all the old stitches inside here where the welt is. And I checked through to make sure the welt is still intact so it's all stitched down nicely. Otherwise, if there's a spot that's coming unstitched, we have to stitch it down by hand. I would have shown you that, but this pair had no damage to the welt, so we didn't have to do that luckily. Um, I also tacked down this uh, heel ren right there just in a few spots because usually they have these staples in the back to hold it down and then they rely on longer nails that they run through the sole area like that there and that um, hold down the ren and the sole. Well we'd rather have the ren being held down at least a little more so I added a few more gripper nails in here. Gripper nails what they do is they go inside and when they hit the a cast iron last. I'll show you this one here. When they hit the cast iron last they turn into like a hook pretty much and then they stay in place a lot better. And then we also took some cork here and filled in this area. There used to be like a 
type of spongy material. Unfortunately, those spongy materials, they're not very good at all. Uh, they wear out fast, they get crushed easily, and they don't really do much for support or shock absorption um, after a while. They, they may last maybe a month, but after a month they start to give out anyways. But we like to fill in this void here that goes in between the uh, ends of the welt with cork. That way you don't feel that little lip like you can see right there on the edge. Um, in the ball of the foot, you definitely feel that a lot more on western boots. On the back area right here where the arch is, you don't feel that at all. Um, just because it's further back and plus you have your heel that's elevating you, so most of your pressure is distributed to the heel and ball of foot in western boots. So even from the factory, they never really add cork in here unless it's got a really low heel. But we got that all filled in. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and glue everything up and uh, stick it together and then allow it to cure overnight. So I'll come back in tomorrow and then continue working on it as well. I like to give it at least some time to cure nicely, but um, today I'm here by myself at the shop, so I keep getting distracted constantly. So I w wasn't able to get these finished out today. Um, but at least I'll give them more time to cure. Still a few more hours, but well, actually. One hour left dang it but anyways i i like to give them at least a few hours to cure so i usually try to do this in the morning but it just did not work out for me today so um i'll glue everything up and stick the soles on trying to center that as much as possible i won't bore you with all that and we'll just move on so we'll see you later all right so i've got everything sanded out right there where the heel base is going to be reattached and then all the edges are a bit smoother now trimmed out now we're over in our stitch room I'm about to be stitching up that sole now and spray it down the water always helps um, lubricate everything a little bit to allow the needle to go through and um, slide across here a little more easily oh, hang on just a second sorry i had to readjust a few things on here but let's go ahead and get started now So that one's all stitched up now. Clip these ends. Now this one of course isn't stitched all the way around. Most western boots, they don't have what's called a full 360 welt. And of course the welt is what we stitch the soles to. Sorry, I'm here by myself again today, so gotta go out to the customers too. But uh, anyways, got everything all stitched up there. Now the welt here, of course, is where the sole gets stitched to it probably see those stitches down in there and a lot of times some may be familiar with what's called channel channeling it out so um, we have a groover that basically cuts out a channel for the stitch to sit inside of all flush but on our machine actually we have a little blade down here that cuts into the leather simultaneously as stitches so this is what's called a closed channel once I end up pressing and hammering everything out it's gonna be a little more closed off and you'll see that in just a little while then um, but otherwise at this point this boots done and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch up the other one and I'll meet you in the other room then all right so we're back here in the other room again and now we're gonna go ahead and hammer all this back out so that the open channel here closes up and it's a little more flush because at the moment it's sticking up slightly and that's usually what happens with it so we just use the side of our last here just carefully hammer through everything.
I have to hit the back of the hammer on the end here because this thing likes to slide off with all that hammering. And it fell off once it hit me in the foot and this thing is solid cast iron so it's not light and it hurts when it falls on the foot. Those cobblers, we have to deal with a lot of challenges like that getting hurt often. Something's always happening almost every day. But anyways, it's a bit more closed off now, so you can still see a, possibly a little bit of the stitch in there, but it's a lot safer, more protected sitting inside that groove there. And now that it's all closed off and pressed in, it really helps protect that stitch nicely. Now at this point, we're, we're done with the weld. I did the other one already as well. I'll kind of just set it aside. And now we're going to go ahead and run our clinch nails into the back of the heel area because we don't want this coming up anymore. I've got a couple on that little plastic wren that's inside, well, underneath there, I mean. But now we've got to run them through here as well. Now, a lot of times, Western boots, they actually have nails up here in the arch area because this one has a a larger welt stitch it goes all the way to the back of the heel and goes underneath that heel base we don't need to hammer nails into this section but if we end up doing that on some western boots which here I'll grab a pair I guess you can't really see it on this one but right there maybe you might be able to see this is a pair that we're gonna be working on it's really damaged but um, there's little nails you can see a little brass one right there that's because the welt only gets stitched up to right over here you can see where the stitching ends at this point and we can do it that way as well but if it was original like that otherwise if we change it it's quite a bit of work actually to alter boots like that and um, definitely costs extra but in that case when we end up doing the nails in this area they're hammered in a particular pattern and we use a all like this beforehand to punch the punch the holes otherwise these clinch nails they're flexible so they have a tendency to you know want to turn the wrong way when they're being hammered in especially in these areas here when they're being put into place and it just looks horrible sometimes if it ends up uh, damaging the leather or anything and it's really annoying so better to be safe than sorry and punch those little holes with an awl first all right So, so far we've got five nails. We put in seven nails usually so that it overlaps where the welt starts, the stitching. Okay. These last few here on the inside, they're sometimes a little iffy because you got that shank coming through here. So it's a little bit of a thicker area sometimes and so we gotta hit it just a little bit harder now at this point i'm pretty much done i just gotta glue everything up and stick the heel bases on and then i'll go ahead and run the nails in for the heel base and we'll just keep going so we'll see you in a bit. all right so we're back here again i've got the heels on there the heel bases they're all glued up and nailed inside so now at this point um we're gonna go ahead and sand everything out. Sorry, I had to try to hurry up with these boots just because this gentleman's uh, asking if he could get them done a little bit sooner because he's leaving out of town. So I can't show you all the details about it, but we got the heel base glued on and then from the inside, and you won't be able to see it, we ran nails, gripper nails, into the heel base. And um, as you can tell, there's a wedge of leather, a couple of wedges of leather built up because he had that heel base very worn out. Now. A lot of times you can also get the whole heel base replaced with, uh, say, one of these guys, for example. Um, a lot of times, though, for Western boots, we like to build our own from scratch. That way they're shaped and formed properly um, around everything. But we try to also save the original one as much as possible because it fits this boot in particular best. But anyways, I've sanded things out on the rough edge sander already. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get started 
with um, sanding out on this machine here. This is our 100 grit sand belts. These are lighter grit, not as rough. Up here we have what's called our numb keg sander. It just spins around and gives us a nice clean finished edge. And then down here you won't really see it, but this is what's called a brister cone. It's a cone shaped uh, sander that allows us to get on the inside here and sand out this heel. Now before I start there's quite a bit uh, left over so I'm going to go ahead and cut all that as much as I can by hand first and then we'll go ahead and get started. So I'll see you back in just a little bit. Alright, so I cut it off just a little bit closer there on the heel now. Get that to show. Alright, but let's go ahead and get started on the sanding now. All right, so can't exactly tell, but it is much smoother now all around. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put the edge varnish ink on, which is basically an edge dressing. It's like an ink that goes on, and at the same time, I'll be able to go through the bottom and treat that just a little bit more. It's very basic. I'm not going to bother you with that. But once we get to varnishing the edges and everything on it, that's uh, that's when I'll let you guys see that that's the more fun part to watch anyways. So we'll see you back in just a little bit. All right, so I've got the edge ink on there. As you can tell, it's not all smooth and even, but it's more of like a dye that helps give us kind of a base coat and then touched up the bottom of the sole a little bit. So it's a little bit darker now, but still has a, more of that uh, leathered finish to it. So we'll go ahead and get started. What we're gonna be using is what's called the Yankee Wax. It's a really hard wax that we're gonna put on our varnish wheel that's over here. It's got stacks of leather heels. So it heats up and the friction basically melts the wax into the heel base and the sole edges all around. Afterwards, we're gonna go over to our nylon brush here. It'll kind of help clean things up a little bit and even out the wax a little bit better too. And then really work it on this horsehair brush to kind of give it that nice buffed look and finish to it. So let's go ahead and get started.
sure to buff up that sole just a little bit. So that kind of gives you an idea. You can definitely see the difference in that shine there. Let's go for the heels right there. Looks a lot better, doesn't it? Even that wedge there, you can maybe still slightly see it, but uh, you know, from a distance, it's impossible basically to see that. So you know, it looks a lot better. Now, I buffed up that bottom of the sole just a tad bit as well on that machine, give it just a little bit of wax. So now we'll go ahead and move on. I'm gonna finish out that other one off camera. I'm also gonna stick in the insoles. Uh, I guess you could see those nails in there, by the way, right there. But I'll go ahead and uh, stick the insoles in there, glue them back down. And I hadn't uh, talked to a gentleman about treating the uppers, but I'm gonna go ahead and treat the uppers a little bit, uh, just a little bit, and I'll show you guys how to take care of um, your ostrich skin on the low end, you know, just at least minor care for it, especially on these tan colors. It's usually uh, one of those things that's harder to treat and take care of because this tan, I mean, it really shows stains and spots very easily. So I'll show you that, I guess, on camera so you'll see what that looks like. So I'll see you back in just a little bit. All right, so we're back here again. We've got the edging all taken care of on there and buffed up the bottom just a little bit. Now, like I said, we're not, we weren't going to do a full treatment on these uppers, but we're still going to at least take care of them a little bit. You know, it's just a shame to see something like this, you know, with a nice pair of Lucchese ostrich skins. So this will give you an idea of what you should do with your light colored ostrich, you know, kind of your basic generic treatment in other words. Now, um, this step right here that I'm about to show you, this is if you need to clean them beforehand. Like as you can see right there, he's got some uh, damage from water and some salt buildup also. So we're gonna go through and spray it down um, with a mixture of vinegar and desalter is what we have in here. Um, now most of you may be more familiar with just a straight desalter. This is a little more concentrated. So if you're gonna be using something more concentrated, you're just gonna apply this onto a rag and scrub it down a little bit. But because we do larger quantities, we mix it up with some vinegar and uh, the two ingredients really help out each other very nicely. And we spray down the boot like this. Now you could do it yourself as well. Basically uh, for every, uh, what is it, uh, eight ounce? For every quart of vinegar, white vinegar, you're gonna use a full bottle of this, pretty much, um, and just spray it down. And that's if uh, that's if you're wanting to do it yourself, the way we're doing it right now. Now the upper doesn't really get much damage on it, but we're still gonna spray it down because once you get them wet like we are right now, you wanna make sure you get the whole thing wet. And of course they're gonna darken up quite a bit. And that's normal because of course it's wet. And then we take our soft nylon brush. This is one of my favorite brushes from Angelus actually. Um, I've been trying to see if I can get a hold of just the brushes. They only come in these little kits. So, you know, that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to get a hold of just the brushes for our own use and for anybody that may want to purchase them. But it's a soft bristle brush, so it's perfect for something like this. Now the other thing also as a cleaner if you want to use is the Angelus Easy Cleaner or also there's one by Lincoln, Lincoln Easy Cleaner as well. And same thing, you just pour it onto a rag and uh, scrub it down. Now if you have a nylon brush like this that's nice and soft, you just pour it into a small little bowl. Of course you don't want to use the bowl afterwards, um, but you can just dip the brush in there and scrub it down. For us it's easier because we've got the spray bottle. Now don't forget to clean the inside of the welt with the brush a little bit too. Even though we stitched it and everything, we're still gonna go through just in case if there's any dust or debris left over in there. 
Now, of course, it's kind of damp there, and so we're gonna let it dry for a little while. And it's a shame, there's a few little pieces missing there. It uh, kills me to see something like that some days. But we're gonna allow these to dry for probably about 15 to 20 minutes. Usually with other materials such as suede or nubuck, you actually want to allow it to dry even longer. But ostrich is fairly thin and breathable, so you don't necessarily need to give it that much time to dry. Alright, so that's all taken care of. Now we're just going to let it dry and we'll meet you back here in just a little bit. Alright, so we're back here again. We've allowed everything to dry nicely. Now we're going to be using Saphir's Delicate Cream. It's uh, wheat protein and uh, jojoba oil based. So it's going to be very delicate on cleaning and conditioning this as well as protecting it too. It does a really good job actually of protecting it against water damage. Now as far as color restoration, I'll do some, but not much. So as you can see that toe there, there's not too much that could be done to it, unfortunately, unless we use something a little bit stronger that's more pigmented, but it doesn't look too great. So I usually recommend trying to leave that alone. All right, well, I gotta hurry. This gentleman's actually here for these, so gotta finish them up. But anyways, I like to, um, use a dauber brush for when I'm applying this on just because the horsehair bristles they really get into every nook and cranny nicely you can use this on a wide variety of leathers also um, other exotics as well as a regular leather like this one here it doesn't do too much for the conditioning aspect of it but it needs to be reapplied a little more frequently probably on average maybe once every uh, every month to three months just because again this is a very delicate cream it's not strong or as heavy as say the renovating cream which is mink oil based um, unless you take it up to the Medal Dior line which has also got some lanolin, uh, lanolin in it I can't talk today but it will definitely darken up this upper significantly now, as you can tell, of course, it's darkening it up in certain areas at the moment, but it will lighten up a lot. I mean, it'll go back to what it was originally and not stay that color. So, you know, of course, anytime you're making something wet, it's going to look like that. But just make sure you get through it all nicely and everything. Put a nice coat on there. You don't need to brush it off quite yet just because you want to allow it to soak in to the leather. But you don't need a lot of time for it to soak in anyways. Just while you're doing each boot individually, that's usually plenty of time. Right. Now, let me grab my brush. Now we're just going to use one of these uh, larger horsehair brushes to just kind of buff it over. And there we go. Now that toe is still kind of lightening up a little bit more as well as a few spots like the heel area there. The parts that tend to get really beaten up and most wear like the toe or the heel. Now they're gonna show the most darkest um, for a little while, probably about uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes. But like I said, this gentleman's actually here for these to pick them up anyways. So I don't exactly have the time to wait for them to dry. But once he puts them in his car, by the time he gets home, he'll be able to wear them just fine. Okay, there we go. So we've got the JR leather soles, the new rubber heels on there, built up the heel there, and uh, treated and conditioned the uppers on these. 
Now this is uh, just one method of doing Western boots. There's a lot more other types of builds and styles out there too. Um, plus there's other things that could be done, of course, like the pull tabs up here could potentially be damaged. We can replace those or fix them up if needed be. Um, you can do a half sole or house leather. You can upgrade to a rubber sole instead of upgrading to the JR sole. So there's a lot of options you can do as well. So, you know, price points, they all vary. I always uh, recommend that you bring it in or at the very least, if you're out of state, send us pictures and the more pictures the better but uh, thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if uh, you have any questions or comments leave them down below otherwise um, if you're local here in the Denver area stop on by we'd love to help with whatever you may have um, if you're a do-it-yourself type of person who wants to get a hold of any Saphir products uh, we'll be happy to point you in the right direction and try to help you out if you're not local um, and you're out of state or a little too far from Denver you're more than welcome to give us a call message us or you know just get in contact with us somehow about either certain products or if you're wanting us to work on your shoes or boots or other leather goods just go to our website cobblersplus.com and under the uh, ship and order tab uh, just follow the directions on there, print out the PDF file, and we'll be glad to take care of it from there for you. And again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please subscribe and hit that notification icon. I'm hoping to make more and more videos as time goes by. I'm still fairly new to all this about different repairs, the process, what we recommend, uh, product testing and recommendations, and even side-by-side -side comparisons. So, uh, you know, We'll see you just next time then.